Reading in another man's book of voyages in a tropic sea and strange thoughts under the green silence of an equatorial forest, I found this passage. You, in the hard and bitter north, on the exposed summit of the world where Polaris glitters in the forehead of a frozen god. And it spoke to me of ourselves, here in the vast, lonely twilight of Alaska, with the rumors of war steadily pulsing against the hillside. The friends we have are few and distant. Their words reach us through the onrushing season, like the hurried sentences of those about to depart. Appalling shadows grope among the trees outside. A nameless animal crawls through the grass to stand on hairy legs and stare unblinking through the window. We have drawn in the flesh against our bones and gripped to our hearts the warmth of our troubled companionship. It is as if we had been sitting here for years in a house like a vessel bound outward on the yellow tide of dusk with the helmsman asleep and the sightless crew staring ahead into nothing, this dark water that closes over our heads. John Haynes, The Dark Water A small dock next to a half-sunken fishing hut, built on location in Windsor Great Park, Windsor, UK, 2nd June 2016 filming by the Flowery Overgrowth, 3rd June inside the fishing hut. Lena begins this minute on her knees, examining some of the flowers closely, Behind her stands Ventress, rifle ready in both hands. Already past Lena and leaving the frame to the right is Radic, heading for the open doorway into the fishing hut. In the distance, at the left edge of frame, Thornson checks out some boats in a small shed. Shepard crouches nearby. Lena has just said the flowers seem to be stuck in a continuous mutation, but we skip her follow-up line from the script. Lena continued. Some kind of morphogenesis error. Dr. Ventress. Apathology? Ventress steps forward and cut too close on Lena from her right. Camera tilts down to Lena's hands as she pulls a large purple flower off its stem. Second four, new angle, close on Lena from the front as she raises the flower up to examine it even more closely. Lena, you sure, sure as hell call, call it a pathology, pathology if you saw this in a human. In the script, Ventress adds, amazing pattern, like a Rorschach test. And we could talk about Rorschach tests, but... That line does not survive into the film. Second ten, close on Radic, just in time for her to enter the fishing hut and leave us looking at the angled eave of the roof and two of the fake trees the production inserted into this location to make it more like a swamp in the American South than this Windsor Pond. Second twelve, angle on Shepard from her left, and we can see she is working, putting water from the pond into a vial of some sort. Second seventeen, angle on Shepard, more from the front, and Thornton in the boat shed beyond her, Thorinson lifts one of the boats and looks under it. Thorinson, jackpot. In the script, Radic finds the boats. Lena, so what do you see in there? Radic has found something else. Radic, hey, check this out. In the undergrowth behind the hut, there are the holes of two upturned, flat-bottomed fiberglass boats. She crouches down and gets a hand under the lip of the hull. Lifts the fiberglass boat easily. Radic, continued, we could use these. Be a much quicker way of getting across the swamp. And the attack happens here in the script. Reveal. Something that Radic hasn't seen. In the black swamp water behind Radic, there is the half-submerged head of a huge alligator. Its armored skin is black, obsidian, reflective. And it has strange eyes. Red pupils that bleed into yellow, like diffusing saffron. Oblivious, Radic turns back to Lena and Dr. Ventress. Radic continued. Shall we see if they still float? The next moment... The alligator lunges at Radic, thrusting out of the water massive jaws pulling open. We can see amidst the water spray and flash of movement this creature is at least two times the size of a normal gator, in bulk as well as length. Lena, Radic! Radic reacts, and sees the gaping mouth and teeth as they lunge towards her. She turns away, just as the creature's jaws snap, closing on her backpack. Radic screams her abruptly knocked out of her, as the alligator viciously slaps its head to the side tossing the young woman like a rag doll. Radic remains held fast by the shoulder straps on her bag. Then the alligator pulls back into the water, and both the creature and Radic are gone. A moment of stunned silence. 
but we are not quite there yet in the film. Thorinson lowers the boat and turns around, amusingly to look over her left shoulder while Shepard is actually to her right. Thorinson. Shepard. Shepard looks back. Motor transportation. transportation. And second 24 smash cut to the fishing hut exterior from the water. Ventress remains standing right behind Lena, still on her knees. And this would be the only shot, really, that we might get the impression that this overgrowth of flowers is what upset this fishing hut, as the script has suggested. But it is not obvious. Camera dollies slash floats slowly along the dock, and second 26, Radic emerges from the doorway. Second 29, Angle and Lena and Ventress. Ventress nods her head. Dr. Ventress. Anything interesting in there? Second 31, Angle and Radic at the doorway. Suspiciously positioned if you have seen enough movies with her back, and especially her backpack, still within the doorframe and the hut. Radic. No, it's, it's been long, long abandoned, abandoned, maybe even before. <laughs> there is a noise, and Radic starts to turn to look behind her just before second 34, she is yanked backward into the hut. Tessa Thompson. You know, what's funny is when I got the part, Alex made a stop in New York to talk to me, especially about the alligator attack, because I think he was a little afraid that I maybe, you know, that any actress might not be up for the the challenge and of course we have an incredible stunt team but you know so much of of the suspense of that exists on on the on your face really so it, so it was a bonus that I was up for the challenge Ready? But he came to New York basically to explain to me what a tough day it was going to be. And I thought, are you, are you making sure that I'm going to be okay so that you really decide, like, can I make the movie? I'm going to be fine, I promise you. Joe McLaren, stunt coordinator. Tessa was absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. A, a really, really uncomfortable scene. Get her. Come on. And again, she didn't complain all day. Not I didn't hear a peep out of her. She was absolutely brilliant. We rehearsed that, so we built a tank for her to rehearse in, so that, you know, but it was warm water and it was clean, and, but, you know, she got the idea of, and we rehearsed the action with her, all the, the drags under, the breath holding, being ragdolled around by the alligator. Then when we came to the day, the, you know, the water was much colder, it was murky, it was dark, and she was in it all day. Um, and again, phenomenal stamina and phenomenal performance and just so, you know, wanted to get, do it all and to get it all right. Gina Rodriguez. You know, she's an itty bitty person, but <laughs> with a lot of water and a big old backpack, it was pretty, it was pretty heavy, which was very cool, you know, and that was really cool to see. And she was a super champ because it was not easy and it was cold outside and it's wet and from like inside the hut to out of the hut to in between takes to setting up different takes it, you know it's extremely demanding and to see her do it without complaining is pretty awesome you're good you're good okay second 35 angle on lena ventress's arm and rifle at the left edge of frame lena starts to get up camera rises with her and moves backward presumably handheld for this shot lena Braddock. As Lena moves to help, maybe we notice that behind her, Ventress is doing nothing. She is the only one still holding her rifle ready, but she remains where she is. These women are effectively expendable to her, as long as her own mission is not compromised. Which is interesting, considering that she is the one we see on watch when they spend the night at Fort Amaya, minute 52. In the script, Ventress even goes so far as to say, Lena, stop. But Lena doesn't listen. In the script, she runs into the swamp up to her knees, gun raised, sweeping the black mirrored surface. In the film, of course, Lena has already set down her rifle. Lena starts to run, Ventress follows suit, but now that I am looking for it, her hesitation seems deliberate. Lena. Radic. Second 38 smash cut, angle from beyond Shepard. Shepard is mostly in silhouette, still gathering samples. The fishing hut takes up much of the left half of frame. Shepard reacts and turns as Lena runs into the hut in the distance. Second 40 smash cut, angle on doorway from inside the fishing hut as Lena enters. Lena, Radic. At that moment, the film cuts to the reverse shot as we hear Radic. Radic bursts out of the water only a couple of meters from Lena. The script says her backpack is gone. She's gasping for breath. 
Radic. Got my bag. Second 43 reverse as Lena enters the water. Ventress has entered the hut, but remains on the raised floor. Lena. Radic. Second 45 reverse. Lena is in the water up to her chest, and I find myself distracted on the paused screen by a framed painting on the wall. It is angled the same as everything else in the hut, instead of hanging level. Radix's head comes up from the water again, apparently having landed on a mostly submerged couch. And as Lena reaches for her, we cut to another angle on the two of them, second 46. Radix, has got my back. Noise from below the water, and we cut back to the previous angle as Radix is swung around by whatever has her. Then, we get a possible continuity error as we angle on Lena approaching again from upslope. But it does allow a nice moment of Ventress standing above the water, doing nothing to assist. Second 53, new angle, as Lena reaches Radic again. The splashing subsides as Lena gets hold of Radic, and it seems whatever grabbed her pack has let go. Second 57, angle on doorway, as Shepard arrives, rifle in hand, but she immediately drops it. Lena, off screen. Help me with it. Shepard moves to help, Thornton arrives behind her. Ventress remains on the raised floor, rifle in hand, mostly obscured by a pillar. Thornton, what's going on? It will be more obvious when they come up out of the water next minute, but this angled tank and half-sunken hut does not have a single level base that has been tilted, but a significant step down just past the edge of water. Why such a hut, if it were an actual location, would have such a step is... Well, it would have no need for such a thing, but for the purpose of the production, it is a way to get to deeper, darker water faster for this moment and for it to be believable that as large a creature as the gator we will see next minute might fit in here along with these women and not bump into them. Second 59, Angle and Lena and Radic in the water as Shepard wades right in after them. And time runs out for this minute. We spoke. What was it we said? Wordlessly watching He waits by the window And wonders at the empty place inside Annihilation is all we are Annihilation. 